What's up guys, welcome back to the Business Download of Clean Energy's EV Wrap-Up. I'm Antonio, and this week we'll be talking about buses serving as many power plants, a centennial birthday party, and the fact that I missed out on Prime Day. Still salty about that one. Before we get started, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below, and also leave a comment on your favorite story. Alright, it's go time, let's get started. Kicking off this week, we have a partnership between GM and Royal Dutch Shell. And yes, I'm talking about the gas company. GM has been making many moves towards electrification in the past few years. And although Shell hasn't come out with a huge electrified showcase, they've also been making the transition towards an EV-driven world. The company is installing more charging stations across the globe and actually has had ports at some of its locations for a couple of years now. But back to the partnership. The two companies will work together to increase EV charging infrastructure and also formulate plans to improve the convenience factor of at-home charging. The project will take place in Texas, where you can find Shell's U.S. headquarters. And the report says Texas residents who own an electrified GM vehicle will get free overnight charging this summer. Pack my pegs, I'm going to Texas. The partnership's goal is to provide comprehensive energy programs to GM customers and, of course, help further America's transition towards electrification. So remember that electric school bus I talked about two weeks ago, you know, with the uh, bi-directional charging that could power a classroom or school? Well, somebody in White Plains, New York must have watched my video because they have three buses that are about to function as many power plants this year. Beginning this month, the e-buses will be stationed as energy banks, storing power and feeding it back to the local grid. The smart charging software built into the vehicle allows all the components to communicate so that batteries can charge when grid demand is low and send back power when demand is high. More and more of these vehicle-to-grid operations are becoming prevalent due to the rise of larger-scale EVs such as buses, garbage trucks, and delivery vans. So it looks like summer vacation is canceled for this fleet. Lincoln decided to join the EV party, and lucky for them, the party just started. Or relatively. You could argue that the party is for Lincoln because its first ever electric vehicle launches just in time for its 100th year anniversary. The debut of the EV will then swiftly be followed by not one, not two, but three other luxurious EVs as part of Lincoln's plan to have half their sales zero emission vehicles by 2025. Lincoln has not yet revealed what the new EV will look like, but it's been hinted that the design could be similar to the Lincoln Zephyr reflection concept revealed at Auto Shanghai this year. The company also shared information on the interior of the new EV, attempting to make it a sleek, expansive space with a panoramic roof to create a sanctuary feel. But as long as the speakers can still bump JB, I'm cool with it. So unfortunately, I didn't participate in Prime Day this year, but in 2022, I'm going to make sure I do for the sole reason that my new electric toothbrush or whatever I end up buying will probably be shipped in an autonomous semi. Amazon just recently put an order in for 1,000 self-driving trucks from Startup Plus and has also given the option to buy a 20% stake in the company. This is fairly recent news, so Amazon hasn't made its decision yet. But if they did decide to hop in on the deal, they'd be joining Hennessy Capital Investment Corporation but a stake in the establishment of Canoe Incorporated. As far as sustainability goes, Plus has announced a new initiative with global engine manufacturer Cummins to co-develop a supervised autonomous truck powered by natural gas, also arriving in 2022. So Plus has a little bit of potential here. I'll keep an eye on them if I were you. Concluding the download, we have Honda announcing the total phase out of gasoline powered cars. They set their goal to 2040, giving their newly appointed CEO, Toshiro Mib, a chance to make his mark in the industry. The Prime Minister of Japan has pledged to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050, so the companies that are first to the plate, like Honda, will benefit most in the future. Honda already is prepared to release three new electric motorcycles and 10 new EVs by 2026, so the plan does look possible, but obviously there's going to be a few critics wondering whether the goal is realistic or not. Big companies like Ford and Audi do not plan to achieve carbon neutrality until at least 2050, but if Honda pulls it off, then they will definitely have other auto manufacturers rethinking their targets. Anyway, that's all we have for you this week on the weekly wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week.